Is your faith under attack right now? Do you feel like you just can't go any further in this race? Do you feel like the spiritual warfare is too much for you? You're too sick, you're too tired, and you just can't do anything else, and you feel like you're about to give up? Welcome back to Rapture Alerts. My name is Sean. If you're just tuning in, this is just a guy talking about Jesus. That's all I do over here. Guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm going to give you the good stuff today. I'm on fire, and I am pumped up about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I'm going to get on here and share his word again. That is my job working for the kingdom. I want to let you know right now that spiritual warfare is at an all-time high. And the verses that I'm going to give to you today, you need to hold on to them, and you need to simply believe. Do not give up hope. Put everything that you have into the Lord, and He is going to bless you, and He's going to see us through. Because we are about to be raptured out of this sin-ridden world, we're going to be transformed and made new. I really appreciate you being here. Let's go ahead and open up a prayer and get started, and we'll have a great time hanging out today. Father, I come to you now, and I give you thanks again for dying on the cross for all of mankind's sins. Thank you so much for saving a wretched sinner like me and making me a beautiful new creature. Lord, thank you for allowing me to work for you and the kingdom and spread the gospel throughout this world before you take us home. I will continue to be a good steward of this channel and do my very best until you arrive. Lord, right now I pray for healing and anybody watching this message, including their families, their children, especially the ones that still do not believe, Father. I pray that you increase their faith and you heal them of any sickness and disease or ailment that they have going on. I pray that you bless their finances, and I pray that you use them as an instrument of your will as you see fit. Lord, I believe it through and through that you are about to take us home, so I will continue to work for the kingdom and spread your word no matter what the enemy does. Please protect this message now with no interference. And let your presence be known. In Jesus' name I pray and give thanks. Amen. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to have a great time hanging out today. Let's talk about faith. Look at Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. We have not seen the Lord yet. We have not seen him descend. There are many people that say he's either not alive, he never died or that he's already come back. Well, I'm here to look at the camera again today and tell you none of that is true. The Lord is very precise in everything that he does, and the Bible is infallible. It is the governing authority on everything, so that's what I'm going to go by. And I promise you that I have not seen him yet, and that he is on the way. This is the definition of faith. You have to have this right now because of the spiritual warfare. Look at the first part of Hebrews where it says, what faith is it says now faith is what it's the assurance of things hoped for well what are we hoping for we're hoping that the lord comes we're hoping that we are transformed in the clouds with him and the dead in christ that will rise first and we want to get our crowns and we go to we want to go to be in eternity with him forever and ever and worship him but that hasn't happened yet we haven't seen it and so we have the faith because that is what we are hoping for there's a comma right there, which is a pause. And then the last part of this says, the conviction of things not seen. Well, let me tell you something. I am convicted again today that my Lord and Savior shed his blood for me on Calvary, on that piece of dogwood. He took that pain and he took that punishment. They mocked him. They scoffed at him. They threw rocks at him and slammed a crown of thorns down on his head. Jesus did die for us on the cross. And they placed him in a tomb. And three days later, a miracle occurred. He rose from the dead. You have to accept that. and You have to believe that in your heart today to be true. If you do that and you believe the gospel, then you are saved and you will go to heaven. I promise you that the Lord is about to descend and make everything better. But we have to hold on to faith and we have to be strong and we have to rebuke the enemy right now. All right, come over here to 2 Corinthians 5, 7. I love this one. It's short and it's sweet. It says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Again, we haven't seen these things that we continuously talk about on here. But don't you see the Lord in other forms? Don't you see him as the gas in your car when you're about to run out? He's the air in your tires. He's the clothes on your back. 
He's this computer equipment in this room that I sit in as I proclaim the gospel every single day to the world until we get out of here. That's what my job is. You can see the Lord in your children when they were born. So just because we have not seen Jesus, trust me, we see him day in and day out. He's always working in our lives. He's always making a difference and he's always reaffirming the promise to us. We're not destined for wrath and he is on the way. We have to hold on to this just because we haven't seen it with these human eyes. I promise you, if you're a born again believer, you have in fact seen Jesus. Let's take a look at Luke 137. I love this one as well. It says, for nothing will be impossible with God. Amen. This is kind of like Philippians 4.13 to me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, meaning nothing is impossible. Well, right now with some of the sicknesses and diseases that we have going on, we get up, we're achy, we have to take medicine. You know, we got to get the coffee. We got to get some food in us. These bodies that we are in are very temperamental, but we have an advantage over those that are lost. The Holy Spirit that resides inside of us that's constantly crying out, Abba, Abba. It wants to go home. The Holy Spirit is a real person, a real entity. It is one third of the Trinity. Everything that I'm saying is true and it's real. I know that you know what I'm talking about, but sometimes when we get alone, we're kind of on an island sometimes. An enemy knows that and we're attacked. So remember what I said a long time ago, one of the number one weapons that the enemy uses is silence. You cannot be silent in this day and age. Spiritual warfare is ramped up and so are the birth pains. So the way to counter spiritual warfare is, of course, first you seek ye the kingdom of God. You always go to Jesus, the source for everything, and you pray to him without ceasing. And then after that, you reach out to other Christians that can pray for you, that can understand what you're going through and maybe confide in the, in the ones that you know really do understand, or maybe they've even been through that situation that you're going through. But if you take another look at this verse, Luke is saying it again right here, for nothing will be impossible with God. That means you can do everything through your faith when you put it in Jesus. All right, guys, let's take a look at Romans 10, 17. It says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Amen. That's exactly what we're doing on here. I want you to hear God's word come out of my mouth, and I want you to believe again today that you can do anything when you put your trust in him. You need to pray without ceasing to him and just say, Father, I need you to work a miracle right now. I'm down. I'm distressed. I need the faith that David had. Think about this for a moment, guys. What kind of faith did David have to have as a young boy going up against a giant? That's much like us today. We feel like we're going up against these giants that we can't defeat. But what happens when we start to pray? What happens when we really take all of our faith and our trust and we put it right back in the Lord and say, Father, I can't do this without you. I need you right now. Please help me. Please save me. Please reaffirm my faith today, Father. I need you. When you call on the Lord, Scripture says he is right there. So I want you to imagine that young boy with five smooth stones, everybody laughing at him. Everybody saying, there's no way that you can defeat this giant. I'm trying to tell you again today, looking at the camera, I'm speaking very clearly. You are a warrior. You are a conqueror. And the Lord is on the way. He wants you to have faith during these trials and these tribulations. When you're attacked, he wants you to come right back to him at the foot of the cross because he's gonna give you all of the provisions that you need and the faith and the power that you need to conquer those giants in your life. Matthew 21, 22 is awesome. It says, and whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. So let's go back through this one together. Whatever you ask in prayer, that doesn't mean God is a genie. It doesn't mean Jesus is going to give you three wishes that you want. It has to line up with his will, correct? And if you ask in prayer and it is in his will, I can promise you this, my friend, you will receive it. It will be so. And look at the last part. If what? If you have faith, it doesn't mean cry out to the Lord and say, I need this and I need that. And I just can't take this anymore. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. And then you just don't have faith after that. What do you think is going to happen? 
This is about running the race the right way. This is about maintaining that faith when we are going through the fire and we feel like we're being burnt up. You have to remember all of the stories are true. There is a fourth in the fire with you, my friend. Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And more importantly, he said that these things would happen before he came back to get us. So he's not lying to us. He's not hurting us. He is refining your faith in the fire. And scripture says that faith is better than gold. All right, guys, let's take a look at Luke 17, 5, and we'll start wrapping up. The title of this says, Increase Our Faith. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. And there's an exclamation point right there. Remember, disciple means student. They called Jesus teacher. So do you think for one second that they had it easy? No, they had it hard. They cried out to him. They were weak in their faith. They doubted. They did all kind of things like that. You have to be able to look at the parallels between us and those disciples of Jesus. They went through hard times as well, but they never gave up. They cried out to him, and that's exactly what we should do. We should at no time feel like, well, we have it under control. We don't need to go back to the foot of the cross, and maybe I don't need to read my Bible or pray today. Let me tell you what you do, because there is a murderer and a deceiver that is prowling around like a roaring lion waiting to devour you and your faith and everything that you stand for. If you are a born-again believer, your soul is intact, you are signed and sealed and delivered, and your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and nobody can do anything about that. Nothing can separate you from God's love once you make that decision, but you can be harassed greatly by the enemy. You can be tormented. You can have things put in your head or something whispered to you that is not true. That is the definition of a Christian being harassed by the enemy himself. I want you to make a decision today to go back to Jesus anytime this happens and ask him, Father, please increase my faith. I'm under attack right now and I need you. If you do that, I promise you that Jesus is going to make a way for you. He's not going to hurt you and he is coming for us. Don't let anybody ever tell you that Jesus is not on the way because we are in the season. It is about to happen. It doesn't matter if I don't know when and you don't know when and no man know at the time or the hour. What matters is that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and he is about to fulfill his promise. He is going to reverse the curse and we are going to be in paradise forever and ever with him. Guys, I love you. I miss you. I'm praying for you. If the rapture isn't right now, a few moments from now, or even tonight, just do what we always say over here. You keep looking up and we'll see you up top.